right, now getting to the Chapter 5 lecture document. Uh, let's start from the top. Chapter 5, it's continuous random variables. And we'll begin just by pointing out that continuous random variables are everywhere. Uh, the temperature in your car during the summer, uh, the free throw percentage of your favorite NBA player, the height of a sunflower, the time it takes to learn a foreign language. So, you know, we dealt with the continuous um, you know, data. Um, that was way back in chapter one. And so, of course, continuous data um, is that there are no gaps between possible data values. Um, so you might say, you know, all of the possibility, there are like an infinite number of possibilities. Um, and so if there's an infinite number of numbers, uh, there is no gap between one possible data value and the next. And usually we see a lot of uh, decimals, um, decimal data values uh, when we deal with continuous random variables. And, you know, we see that in each of those examples, right? The temperature in your car. Well, you know, a thermometer, uh, maybe think of a digital thermometer, is only going to be so accurate. But if you could measure the temperature more and more accurately, right, those decimal digits, would go on and on and on. Um, same thing for free throw percentage, decimals, um, the height of a sunflower. If you're ever measuring the length or the height of something, you know, it, it, you're only limited by your measuring device. And so if you can measure more accurately, you know, you can see more and more decimal numbers. Uh, and then time, we always think of as continuous, uh, the time it takes to learn a new language. Okay, so here we get to the definition, the continuous random variable. So um, a numerical value whose possible values are infinite and without gaps. Uh, that's the continuous and then the random variable part to it means that there is an associated probability. Um, and I've defined again a probability distribution that's technically nothing new but I think it's a good idea. Um, a graph that gives the probability for each value. Um, now uh, here's the thing, so when it comes to graphing the probabilities for the continuous random variable, we have to be very careful, and that's what the following example um, and explanations are all about. Um, so it says there, for continuous data, the probability distribution is depicted as a curve. Um, so with discrete data, you know, where there are these gaps um, or these a, a finite number of data values, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, something like that. Um, the probability distribution would look like a histogram, right? It'd be these bins, uh, one bin for each possible data value. But when you have an infinite number of possible data values, then the graph looks like a curve. Uh, and that's what we see in the example. The following is the probability distribution for the typical number of minutes it takes Americans to fall asleep at night. So it's kind of interesting. So if you look at that curve, um, let's just kind of you know, ponder that for a moment. Um, the number of minutes that it takes a typical American to fall asleep at night. So what you see on the horizontal axis are, well, the number of minutes. And on the vertical axis, the probabilities. So you notice that, you know, if you start at the far left, um, there's a certain proportion or probability um, of the of, of all Americans who fall asleep almost instantly. So, um, you know, very close to zero and, and certainly, you know, a good percentage of people maybe somewhere between, you know, zero and one minute or zero and five minutes. And as we get further out, the probabilities decrease. Uh, yet you can tell uh, there are some people who it takes maybe on average about half an hour, 30 minutes to fall asleep. And there's even data even spread out even further than that, you know, all the way up to 60 minutes. And it's getting very close to zero at that point. Uh, zero probability, but there is still a, a small percentage uh, of Americans who are even above 60 minutes. Mm, okay, so what does it say underneath there? 
um, to help interpret the distribution uh, about 14 percent of people fall asleep almost instantly yeah so you see on the far left it's way up there at almost 14 percent or about 14 percent four percent fall asleep in just under 10 minutes so if you were to draw the line out from a uh, 0.04 probability draw that horizontal line out to the right it would hit that curve uh, at just under 10 minutes it's hard to say exactly how much I don't think it's all the way down to nine minutes but it, it's pretty close to that somewhere between maybe nine and ten minutes the probabilities drop quickly but a very small percent of Americans typically take over 30 or even 60 minutes to fall asleep at night although this is the way to read the distribution we cannot claim that a certain percentage of Americans typically fall asleep at any exact number of minutes okay now this is where it gets a bit strange when it comes to the continuous random variable and this ties back into what we were doing in the prereqs so we cannot say any percent of Americans fall asleep at exactly any number of minutes since the variable has an infinite number of total possible values the probability for any single value is zero okay again very weird let's just think you know what is the probability uh, that the that a typical American will fall asleep in 10 minutes okay 10 minutes exactly well you would think well just look at 10 minutes and go up to where the curve is and whatever that probability you know something maybe a little bit less than four percent whatever that is well that's the that's the percentage of of Americans who fall asleep in exactly 10 minutes but that would be wrong um, because the minutes are a time there's an infinite number of possible values right so you know we can mark 10 and 20 and 30 um, but if we wanted to say so you know um, you know how many typical Americans or how many Americans typically fall asleep at exactly 10 minutes it would be no one why is that because if we really measured how long it takes them to fall asleep it would never be exactly 10 minutes you know maybe it would be like 10 minutes 3 seconds or you know 10 minutes 3.120457 seconds um, it would never be exactly 10 minutes 0 0.000000 seconds it would always be a little bit off um, so the chances of somebody being exactly 10 minutes it can't happen and that that goes for any other time as well it's never going to be exact um, and that's what we saw in those prereqs as well well how are we going to calculate probabilities then if the probability of any exact time is zero what do we do we're kind of aren't we stuck and no we've got this clever way of still predicting or still calculating probabilities and that's what it says at the bottom instead we will find the probability up to a value of X to find the probability that a randomly selected American will take up to a given number of minutes to fall asleep we find the area under the curve up to that point okay so let me uh, we're going to continue with this example on the next page it says for instance to find the probability that a randomly selected American will fall asleep in under 10 minutes or you might say uh, fall asleep up to 10 minutes although here it makes more sense to say just under 10 minutes then we have to find the area shown in that picture so we take the area from 0 up to 10 and it's shaded there that area would be the probability that a randomly selected American will fall asleep in under 10 minutes it could be anywhere under 10 minutes and you think well how are we gonna find an area like that okay well we're gonna have formulas for those things so we're not gonna have to go through you know any kind of uh, you know awkward geometry or anything like that um, we're gonna have formulas that will calculate those things 
um, exactly for us. So it says, in this chapter, formulas will be developed to calculate such areas quickly. Okay, and just kind of keep in mind the takeaway from this is when you deal with the continuous random variable, you all the formulas we're going to see are the probabilities up to a certain value. Okay, so we have a couple more things to define. Um, there's a lot of theory here at the beginning. Um, the probability density function is the function which gives the probability for each value of the variable denoted f of x. Uh, if that notation might look familiar to some of you, maybe others of you it doesn't look as familiar. Uh, the f parentheses x we read as f of x. And we just kind of apologize for the shadows f of x so the function value at the x value we've really been dealing with you know this already like probability of x has the same idea okay so the probability density function would be the curve that you see in the graph so if you go back to page number one that curve that's coming down uh, that would be the probability density function f of x However, to calculate probabilities, we use the cumulative distribution function. The function which calculates the probability of all variable values up to a desired value. Uh, and it's got this kind of funky notation. Instead of P of X, it's P of capital X less than little x. So here we see the capital X and the lowercase x again, which is always uh, you know, kind, of, kind of a strange thing. So I just had to pause there. Uh, street racing going on outside my, uh, my front yard. Okay, so um, the capital X, if you remember, that denotes all possible X values. The lowercase x is a particular x value. So when we see examples here in a moment, we will put values in here. So we'll say x less than a particular number. That means we're trying to find the probability up to that number. All right. Um, as seen, I'll go back to the document as seen in the example. The probability is represented as the area under the curve up to the desired variable value the entire area under the curve is equal to one. Okay, this is big. And if you even scroll back to uh, the first page and the graph there, if you were to find all of the area beneath that curve, all the way out to infinite minutes, <laughs> which is, a, that would be really hard. Somebody can't even fall asleep in infinite minutes, but in theory, that curve stretches out to infinity uh, to the right all of that area stretching out infinitely far is exactly one. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, that represents 100%. Uh, and that makes sense, right? If you take all of the area, that's, that covers every possible, um, you know, American's time to fall asleep. So that's 100% of the data. Um, so, okay, so the curve, all the area under the curve is equal to one or 100% since this would capture all of the data. Also note the probability that the variable takes on any single value is zero since there are an infinite number of possibilities. And we've talked about that, you know, a bunch of times now. What's the chances that that variable value is equal to any one number? Always zero because there's, that's, you're taking like one out of in, infinite possibilities. Okay, let's stop this video here. We didn't even do uh, any practice problems. We're going to get to the exponential distribution next.